Welcome to the Wing Chun Discussion Podcast with your hosts, Dane and Vito, interviewing Wing Chun practitioners and instructors, expanding the world of Wing Chun. Welcome to the Wing Chun Discussion Podcast. I'm Vito. I'm Dane, and today we have uh, Larry London from London's Wing Chun in Broad Alban, New York. Larry, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Hey, Larry. It's really nice to, to meet with you and to talk with you. Nice to meet both of you guys. Cool. So where are you from? Tell us a little bit about you and, and about your history. Well, essentially, I am from Tucson, Arizona. Mm-hmm. Uh, for I lived out there for 30 plus years as a, an Air Force dependent, lived in other places before, but mostly there. Professionally, in my trade, I'm a roofer. Uh, I was a mm-hmm. roofer, retired for at almost 40 years. But in the meantime, I met my first teacher in 1978 just by chance. I wasn't even looking to get into any kind of martial arts. I really didn't care. <laughs> you know, it was just by chance that I ran into um, Augustine Fong was my first teacher. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. My story was with Wing Chun was I was um, messing around with a friend of mine. And was a, um, he had, he's an airborne ranger from, um, had learned um, a type of martial art in Vietnam. We were practicing in my yard one day, just farting around. The punching was a straight punch, like a Wing Chun punch. Uh-huh. And one guy apparently was watching from another house that I wasn't aware of. And some guy came pulling up alongside the road and, Asked us, uh, we were doing Wing Chun because he saw the straight punches, I guess. And uh-huh. he had a whole uniform on with a sash and everything and uh, just came bounding into my backyard. And uh, we said, <laughs> no, what's that? And about that time, the other guy had been watching us. He was uh, he had, was doing, he was a karate person. In those days, there was a lot of fighting. You know, things are different then than they are now. I guess people fight now, but uh. anyway, um, so the karate guy, he was kind of excited, and he said, does anybody want to spar? And we said, nah, we're good. And the Wing Chun guy said, well, I'll spar you. So um, we, we got a show right there in front of us. It was kind of interesting. <laughs> and the karate guy was really good with his kicks, strong. Uh-huh. He's a very strong guy. And he was throwing kicks and punches into this guy, just really strong. You could tell. And the other guy was just effortlessly blocking him. And his fist was always in the guy's face or on his chest, <laughs> touching him. Wow. And we were sitting there watching him with our mouths open, and the guy wasn't even moving him, you know, that was charging into him. And um, uh-huh. he wore himself out in a few minutes, and he said, ah, I had enough of this. And um, he left. And we asked him, well, what was that? He said, what would you call that? And he said, that, that's a wee ton. Oh, well, oh, maybe a year or so later, I was uh, downtown and a young person at the time. I'm looking for another job, and I just happened to see a Wing Chun sign over my head, and then it was his teacher. Mm-hmm. And so I started there. I um, I was kind of lucky because I, for the first of uh, several months of my training, I was learning in the morning, and he had just opened a morning class, so I had. A, one-on-one sessions for quite some time. It was pretty neat. And then um, once I changed my job and I had a different, uh, I, I joined the main group of, you know, his students in the evening. Mm-hmm. And so um, I stuck with him for um, the first couple of years, six days a week, you know, and more if I could. Very dedicated. I got to up to probably a, I was um, just before I was uh, beginning to learn UG, and uh, my work pulled me away. I was raising kids. I couldn't come to class as much. Mm -hmm. And some years went by, and I was still, you know, a student, and I relocated to New York State. And um, a lot of years went by. I I always wanted to teach, but it seemed like any time I – tried to show anybody anything. They just they didn't really want to do any of the work. They just want to learn the tricks, you know. Mm-hmm. And a couple of close friends I actually taught some tricks to, and they turned around and hurt people seriously with them. Oh, kind of wow. taught me a lesson that, you know, what, what kind of student do you want? How do you really want to teach, you know? 
It's mm-hmm. it's it's not about uh, it's not about you. It's about that person that you're teaching, and what mm-hmm. what they do in public is what you've shown them. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, put it this way: if you're training a fighter, that's great. You know, they're making a name. They're making a name. But then you train somebody that goes out in bars and starts beating up innocent people just because they have a temper. That's a different story, right? Yeah. So I met my, I met some guy that um, was supposedly a Wing Chun person. And um, through him, I met another guy that was a student of a, of a, of a person. Um, and we touched hands one night and he surprised me and I surprised him. I, I couldn't believe I actually met somebody that was actually practicing Wing Chun. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, he turned out to be a student of uh, Dr. Jack Wing. And mm-hmm. um, oh, a couple weeks later, someone told me that this guy, Jack Wing, wanted to meet me. And so I met him, and he saw my you know, level. And I, I immediately wanted to learn from him because he, he was a, he was an amazing person, as far as uh, ability. Both of uh-huh. them are actually, you know, you may know of one. I don't know about if you know both of them, but yeah. So, and you and you mentioned uh, Augustine Fong. So, what was your experience with him? Augustine Fong is. Um, it's quite a person, actually. Both of them. They're both. Um, I want to say they're both 71, 72 right now, and they're in. Uh, they're both. I guess you could say gentlemen. Very calm, easygoing. Mm-hmm. And um, but Augustine Fong's training was um, a little bit more diversified. He had uh, learned from a very well-known healer, and so he was. He is also a healer. He's an acupuncturist bone setting mm-hmm. and an herbalist i barely skimmed the surface of all that i really wanted to learn from him he's quite an amazing person he showed me some things um energetically uh, mm-hmm. early on that blew my mind uh as his student he used to get visitors at times and maybe probably still does um that were practitioners of different types of arts, mostly Chinese. And I saw some amazing things through the years, different people with, you know, these abilities, right? Um, But him as a person, he's very easygoing. When he was younger, he was like a bull, right? When I was his first student, when I was first his student, I wasn't his first student. And, Mm -hmm. um, of course, I was younger then. He's mellowed out quite a quite a lot, but he used to do some amazing things, you know, pick up five people up on a bench, on a bench with his teeth, you know, with a bull. Okay. Wow. <laughs> and um, yeah, these are just some amazing things about him. I was stretching one day and I was on the floor, and I had been with him a few months. Stretching is a big thing that a lot of people don't really think is important but it really is but i'm the stretch that where you're uh, the bottoms of your feet are touched together and you're pulling your head down and you're sitting on your butt mm-hmm. yeah i, I, know I don't one. know the exact name of the stretch but you probably know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah it's very difficult to pull your head to the floor right much less yeah. to your level of your knees much less put your knees to the floor right he put his hand on my back and told me to relax and this was when he was younger and um told me don't think any silly thoughts and relax and he pushed me all the way to the floor i felt i mean it wasn't forceful i felt like there's just all the resistance in my body went away and the next thing you know my head's touching the floor and he told me stay there as long as you can and um it was a state okay mm-hmm. a state of being uh, that he introduced me to and um Stayed there for a little while, got up, and then tried to pull myself back to it. And <laughs> I was back to square one again. Oh, but wow. as far as his abilities with Wing Chun, uh, he learned from Ho Ka Ming. Ho Ka Ming was uh, Yip Man's second class. Uh-huh. And 
he was uh, himself, Augustine Fong was a fighter. He was on Ho Cummings fight team. And, um, wow. yeah, he, he, um, he quit his fighting. He put somebody in a coma one time. There was a challenge match and the guy was going around. Scum school was going around. They wanted to challenge the Wing Chun people. And they went to that man's school and that man said, I don't want to, I don't want to challenge any, fight anybody. Go to Ho Cummings school. So they uh -huh. went there and, um, they went into his school and, uh, he selected Augustine to fight for the school. And after a little bit, Augustine had him up against a, I guess he knocks him out into a dummy. The guy back of his head hit the dummy and knocked him out and they carried him out. He was mm -hmm. in a coma and that really, yeah. um, impacted Augustine, you know, as far as what we do with our own tongue, right? What we do mm -hmm. to another person. Yeah. Anyway, Put it this way, his very uh, his skill in Wing Chun is uh, definitely up there. The same with both of them. In his class, uh, it was just probably similar to my classes. I have to say that I had to teach a little bit different because he was traditional when I was younger. He was traditional like uh, his teacher, where you you know you have to uh, really sink into Yiji Kim Young Ma until you mm -hmm. can prove and. Uh, that you're able, <laughs> then you can move on. That's that like stance training that you do for hours before right. you do anything else. Stance, yep. And of course, uh, I guess even back then he didn't want to lose uh, lose somebody to just walk away because this is uh, too boring. <laughs> so mm -hmm. he, uh, you know, I learned a, a few other little things right off, like five blocks and things like this to punch. But mm -hmm. as far as actually. Starting to learn the first form, I had to get the stance right first. Typical class. A lot of people are too much in a hurry to do things. I mean, in a typical class, we do a thousand punches, hundred front kicks, hundred side kicks. You know, front mm -hmm. kick up, front kick down. So many um, repetitious exercises. Where you know, mm -hmm. um, we are building the core. I do the same thing with my students, but. I uh, take it a little bit easier on them, you know. Mm -hmm. I found out that uh, you know people just walk away. Yeah, know? I think anyway. that's true. Yeah, with the uh, with the modern um, uh, I don't know palette, I would say. I that, guess uh, that yeah, it's it's got to be more diversified, I guess, because if you're kicking and punching like that, it's really really good for your training, but it might not keep uh, people coming to the school. That's right. It is it is most definitely, uh, to me, there is a, a specific route that you need to take when you're training. Um, and not just Wing Chun, any of the martial arts, really. Just like any other skill. You have to start from the beginning. Just like school, right? <laughs> you start in mm -hmm. kindergarten. If you, miss a, if you miss some of the subject and you go on and you can't, you can't read. What good does it do to do to study materials if you can't read? Exactly. And that's the, fun the fundamentals. Yes. Um, but anyway. Okay, cool. So, um, I mean, so far it sounds like you've been able to train under some, some really skilled people and, and some that really influenced you. Um, you talked a little bit about uh, Augustine Fong. So, uh, I wonder what were some of the similarities or differences uh, training under Jack Ling? Let me say this first. You know, people talk a, a lot about these guys do Wing Chun, but they never fought before, so they 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 wouldn't know crap, right? Mm -hmm. My generation is a different generation. We would we were fighters, you know. I mean, people mm -hmm. in general, uh, and I guess there's a lot of people that way now, of course, but not so much like it was then, and. Um, he encourages us to, you know, try it out. Try it out against somebody. Try it out against another style. And, you know, it's not necessarily go out and kick people's butts, but try your mm -hmm. skill against somebody with skill. And um, once I became his student, I never lost a fight, ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never lost a fight. There was, I, I had a couple people that I fought against that were uh, skilled in other styles. The Wing Chun that I was, you know, that I learned was uh, very effective. By the time I met Jack Ling, I had been practicing Wing Chun for, Jesus, some time. And uh, 
the difference is both styles stress rooting, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fang Jingchun, uh, Ho Ka Ming, they stress a 50-50 stance. Uh-huh. So you're generating from the middle, constantly pushing from the middle, 50-50. Essentially, in certain positions, it will go to a, what you might call a 60-40 or even a 90-10, right? Mm-hmm. Where you're, when you have stress on a part of your body, it ultimately goes to some part of your root, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but the difference is in uh, when you lift your leg, like we did a lot of single leg stuff, even guys, when you see them fight, well, they have one leg forward. Where does all the pressure go? Well, a lot of times the pressure is going to go to that back leg, right? Right. Unless they're front, front-footed. But Jack Ling's style, he learned from Lung Xiong. And mm. oh, a different, uh, a different lineage. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Lung Xiong was, uh, excuse me, the man's first student, right? Uh, mm-hmm. He was the first person to challenge, <laughs> challenge him and get beaten by him and be impressed by him. But anyway. Jack Ling is a very uh, soft-spoken man. He's a, uh, a college professor. Uh, when I first met him, he was uh, a professor emeritus at uh, Skidmore College in uh, Saratoga, New York. And mm-hmm. the, the difference is in the two styles is um, the Lung Chung lineage really teaches more of a, a, a single leg thing. Always uh, it goes to one side to more more or less um, – Say, for instance, you are turning, and mm-hmm. as you're turning, a lot of people will turn, and their root is in the center in between their feet. Yeah, like if you're turning on your heels uh, to side stances. Right. And gotcha. um, But with the other style, the style that I learned from Jack, when you're turning, your weight is resting on one leg, not in the middle. Okay. That's the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a difference in the forms, slight difference. Uh, some of the movements are smaller, I might say maybe even, a, you know, like a smaller circle mm-hmm. where um, many people do the arm break, um, for instance, and they use a big giant motion and they're pulling it all the way to the elbow. The jump is going all the way to the elbow in, yeah. in the crook of the arm, which is uh, for an arm break, that's as far as you can go with it. We practice it from the wrist. If you follow oh, that's in chum Q, right? Yes. Yeah. So Actually, instead I've been, of your jump pulling all the way into the crook of your arm, the jump only goes into your wrist. Yeah. Jack describes it as um, a long bridge, Wing Chun. Uh-huh. Essentially, um, if you're practicing Wing Chun properly and you're rooted and you understand your connection from your root clear to the end of your fingertips, you're able to do certain things. Uh, it works that way with the pole eventually, right? Mm-hmm. because you're putting your energy into the end of the pole. But what happens is you can get compromised with the tip of the pole, right? But the closer you get to the source of the pole, the more powerful the energy is. Right. You follow what I'm saying? And the same thing should be with the practitioner. The closer you get to that Wing Chun person, the more in danger you should be. Yeah. You're closer to the source of the power. Yeah. But, um, you know, a lot of people were getting out of hand with all this, um, the chain punching. And um, people will do demonstrations where they're doing like uh, 20 hits on a person before they fall down or uh-huh. as their demonstration. But in reality, you're not going to need to hit them maybe more than a couple of times. Yeah, because it's not the goal to hit a bunch of times. You want to end it as soon as possible by uh, maximizing the power in the least amount of strikes. That's right. The person that you fight has two hands and two legs, and you have two hands and two legs. Right? Mm-hmm. Every movement that you do can produce power. In reality, if you did chain punch and you hit the person the first time, you're throwing all these punches in the air, and he's already on the ground if you're doing mm-hmm. your wing chun properly. Mm-hmm. I generally teach my students, um, say along those lines, uh, as far as uh, striking goes and attacks, I teach teach them as the way I learned in twos and threes, mm-hmm. three times, two times and three times. Generally, you hit a person twice, they're down. Mm-hmm. 
once they're going down and the second time, you know, it's like uh, the old saying, the one-two punch. The reason for that is if a person gets punched in the head, it jars their brain. Yeah. The brain can't take two of them. But anyway, Ho Kam Ming uh, was at a, he had a, did a seminar with us. And everybody was excited to see him. And they asked him about the one-inch punch that uh, Bruce Lee did. And of course, Augustine would have his own take, but they were interested in hearing what he said. And he didn't have a lot of very good things to say about Bruce Lee at all, to be honest with you. And um, okay. <clears throat> he had no respect for him because he didn't finish the system. <clears throat> but he basically said that it's a no-inch punch. You should be able to touch and produce great power, which is a fact. I guess uh, we may be getting off the beaten path here. <laughs> <But laughs> That's okay. I know a lot of people are really, really into this online training and stuff. And I, and I guess in a way, I've had students that want me to uh, put the forms online, to, you know, show the forms online. And the main reason is because they don't remember them. Yeah. Do you not remember any part of the forms you ever learned? How many moves are there, right? And some of my students were with me some time. What that told me was they were with me long enough to get a skill, but after they went back into life again and hadn't been showing up to class, they, they weren't practicing on their own enough to, to remember. Right, yeah. So it takes a personal dedication, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I know so far we've, we've talked about a couple of interesting things because you, you talked about – the power behind uh, the punches like and some of those principles of like y you want to be able to like maximize the force you know uh, with with hitting um as well as you know some of the stuff from your from your teachers uh, so on this topic i'm wondering like what are some principles that you learned from wing chun that you feel are are really important the first and foremost thing that that wing chun helped me with was myself my temper. I actually grew up with a, a violent background. I had a very uh, physically abusive father that was an alcoholic. Being hit with a big giant fist was nothing. <laughs> Fighting, so, so, I mean, so fighting a kid my size was nothing. And so I teach that way. So you're learning calmness. That's one of the principles. Yeah. The structural principles of Wing Chun, if you're learning them properly, will help you in everything that you're doing physically in life. Mm -hmm. If you see it that way. As I say, you know, one, one person said, uh, had a saying one time, I said, uh, everything that comes out of me is Wing Chun. Yeah. And that's not just fighting. That's in your personality without even the fighting. And believe it or not, that's, if that was what impressed me the most about Augustine Fong because um, he had all this great skill. And at the time, you know, everybody's used to it in my, you know, the karate days. And what, what are people impressed by? You know, this big giant guy with a huge beard and big giant sweating body with hair on his chest. And he's slamming a guy in a ring. Wow. Right, uh -huh. and uh, he has apparent skill, but a lot of the a lot of the skill is soft spoken. But the foundation, the structural foundations, have helped me in my life and in my career to do physical labor a lot easier. I understood physical labor, and I could do a tremendous amount of physical labor compared to my coworkers because of my understanding. Wow, it's like um, it's going back to learning that the structure and how to keep like your own structural integrity. And the relationship between your body and, and other mass. That's right. Um, that kind of thing, right? That's right. Yeah. I learned, um, I, I call it a short while. It was four years with Jack. But his style, comparatively, I want to say it's it's softer than Augustine's. They both have the same result. You know, they mm -hmm. both, we both you know, practice the center line theory, practice rooting. The difference is that um, the Jack Ling's is, is softer in the approach. There are some things I like about the second system I learned, maybe a little bit more so than the first system, but I would put down neither one, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've actually had people ask me, hey, if uh, Jack and Augustine had a fight, who do you think would win? And mm -hmm. uh, my answer is it, it doesn't really matter. They're never going to fight. They don't care. <laughs> yeah, <You know? laughs> yeah. let's be realistic. It's only important to other people, but, you know, so much information. I would say that uh, balance – you know, can can you guys do the single leg okay? Single leg stance? Yeah, actually, that's, for me, that's one of the things that I'm able to do now in, in the quarantine a lot. So I actually do that a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of degrees to that. We're comfortable with our balance standing on two feet. Then we can be comfortable with our balance standing on uh, holding one foot up just off the floor. But then when you're holding it up properly with your knee above your hips, right, mm -hmm. it's a different story. Then you're working on your balance. Right. Have you ever tried closing your eyes? Yeah. Your leg? Yeah, that's much harder. It's relatively um, impossible. <laughs> I did it. Um, it I, was, I had to do physical. Yeah, 
I had to do uh, physical therapy uh, for my knee. And uh, the doctor put me on one of those like half balls or whatever. I had to stand on it. Yes. And balance. Yes. And then he's like, okay, now try closing your eyes. And I did. I was able to do it okay. And he's like, wow, no one's ever <laughs> no one's ever been able to do that. <laughs> yep. It's different on two feet. One leg is a, yeah. uh, two feet is easier, of course, but one leg is a, a, a lot different. I'll also say that my Wing Chun, because of what I did for uh, for a living, you know, as a roofer, a lot of the guys I work with are just rough people, you know. And when I was young, I had no, no problem fighting anybody. I was happy to show off the skill that I was learning, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, but, that I, but as I got older, um, I started to realize that there are those out there that would, if they can't beat you one way, they'll beat you another way. They'll sneak up behind you and put a bullet in you just because you insulted them. So you have to oh, be aware yeah. of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And most of the guys that, that I guess you could say I pretty much uh, did hard body practice all day long. <laughs> you know, yeah, iron body training. skill. Mm -hmm. um, and was always working out. But the whole time I was, was doing, I'm using Wing Chun principles. Um, and so because of my physical build and the, the way I've worked so hard, um, it attributes to a lot of the, of the physical power behind what I do, but it does nothing against real skill. And my teacher, my second teacher, when I first met him, hadn't run into anybody that could touch me. And, um, he did it easily. He was always mm -hmm. right on me, and I was always uncomfortable. He always had my hands trapped, mm -hmm. seemingly miraculously. You know? <laughs> and um, and so that's that was the reason why I wanted to learn the system. The biggest thing, I think, also with Wing Chun is the ability to have control in what you're doing and also, mm -hmm. therefore, self-control. You know, a Wing Chun person would be a good person if he's the right kind of guy, but he'd be a good person for a bouncer, for instance, mm -hmm. in my life, I've had so many things happen, but I've had things happen where I had to soften somebody up, so to say, but they needed to be softened up to calm down because they were going to hurt someone else. You know, you have the ability to put whatever amount of power you want through your technique or you can apply it in different ways. We used to apply it standing up, we used to apply, would do you know, chi sao, for instance, standing up, sitting down in chairs, laying side by side on the ground. Have you ever tried that? Uh, no, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I had an experience one time. One of the guys that was working for me was a state wrestling champion. And he was really interested in, in seeing my skill as it happened so many times. This was years ago. He tried diving in on me, and he couldn't get me. Couldn't do shit. I'd always tag him in the back of his neck or, uh, you know, I'd show him I could really easily hurt him as he's trying uh -huh. to get my legs or even uh -huh. just kick him. But when he had me from a starting point from wrestling, he easily crumbled me into a little ball, and there was nothing uh -huh. I could do about it um, structurally. But I showed him I could easily get out of it by manipulating vital points. <laughs> yeah. You know? A lot of people don't realize that uh, Wing Chun is, is really um, technical boxing, a scientific mm -hmm. system, as a lot of people have said. Anyway. Um, actually, I'd like to ask you this question now because uh, we're starting to talk about people's uh, perceptions. Uh, what do you think right now in the state of uh, you know martial arts, uh, the way it is right now, You've already kind of described Wing Chun as like technical boxing, but what, what do you think is its place in the greater world of martial arts? I think that um, because of the media, there are more people that are able to make themselves known and become leaders and teachers because they have a little bit of, they have more money than anybody else, <laughs> but they don't have a lot of skill to back themselves up. Uh -huh. There's been a lot of that. And, you know, when I was young, we didn't have all that stuff. And, of course, someone would have the newspaper or uh, the television and all that stuff. But now anybody can be a master. They just have to show it online. 
and it's becoming right. kind of sickening. Then you get guys that go through that they have some kind of training, and they're going to actually punch you, and they go into somebody's school, and they beat the crap out of them because mm-hmm. the guy really never fought, doesn't have any skill. You know? mm-hmm. How much did he absorb? And this is not just Wing Chun, any style. Wing Chun is to me is um, a gentleman's art. Okay. Mm-hmm. In the past, those the only ones that would learn Wing Chun were those that were able to afford to pay a lot for lessons. That's just, I see. This is one thing that people don't realize too about the past um, and who learned Wing Chun um, in, the, in the the recent past, uh, Yip Man's era and his students. Yet man paid a tremendous amount to learn Wing Chun, and he came from a very rich family. And, mm-hmm. and every the same thing can be said for every single one of his students. They all came from mm-hmm. money. They didn't have to work hard for a living, and they could put everything that they had into their Wing Chun and spend hours and hours and hours and hours training. Right. Or a person that, that's why a uh, man had said one time that a person that works hard for a living can't learn Wing Chun because they, they can't do the training and work hard at the same time. Right. I did it, <laughs> but mm-hmm. it takes a special passion. Let me tell you, so I would work uh, eight hours a day on the roof and um, come home and take a shower and I'd be worn out. But I go to school and it was a whole different kind of a sweat. And I really, you know, got into it. Wow. Even the guys with skill, I don't understand um, – and I'm not going to mention any names because it's not important. I don't care to mm-hmm. pick it with anyone. Yeah. But even there's there's guys that definitely have skill that are promoting online courses. And I think that's great. But, you know, you can you can really uh, blow smoke up someone's butt with that kind of stuff because you're giving them kind of a false sense of confidence if you're not mm-hmm. giving them, you know, one-on-one training to me. Mm-hmm. I mean – you can develop your fist by seeing somebody punch the wall bag and you can uh-huh. follow them and de- develop your punch that way. You can develop your stance by seeing somebody doing the stance and following that and certain exercises. But there are so many finite points, so many finite points. If you miss something, the whole, th- uh, the rest of it's meaningless, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. It, and so, Really, we're going in a direction where, you know, you don't have a lot of people that are actually um, showing any fighting. They're showing some, there's people out there showing skill, which is great. Where are their students showing skill? Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't myself had a student that I've gotten close to completing the system. Okay. And I don't think there's a whole lot of them out there that at this present day, that have that maybe a, a big organized school. Some of them, that I, but let me take that back. There are teachers that are doing it. <laughs> yes. On a day to day basis, but a lot of them aren't the ones that are uh, promoting online courses. I um, see. So it sounds like, um, it sounds like the availability of like the, the ease of in which to make an online thing more, more difficult to, to find um, that real skill uh, maybe because of the, the amount of people uh, uh, that it's available, you know, to see online. I, I think um, if everybody wants to w- to learn Wing Chun in the world, we're in trouble because there's not enough teachers. Mm-hmm. But but we know that's not going to happen. There are a lot of other interests out there that people have. Um, yeah, it's a tragedy, you know, what's going on with the martial arts world. But on the other hand, those that practice and those that are practicing right will always continue to go on, you know, in spite of the mm-hmm. world, in spite of what mm-hmm. the world thinks about. Who cares what the world thinks about Wing Chun or MMA or Taekwondo or whatever? It, what matters is uh, is the individual person. I agree with that because it's like Kung Fu, martial arts is, 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 a, is a personal journey, right? That's correct. It's not, um, I mean, it is like a worldwide thing. I mean, it's, there's been a movement to, you know, to, to practice. So is guns, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> really? If yeah. you look at it in that context, uh, uh-huh. martial arts, boxing, any kind of self-defense, it's a good thing if it's done properly. Yeah. Um, 
but anyway, it really is for for the person. Yes. Yeah. Um, I I can tell you this. I've I won't teach a student the wrong way, and I myself I think about what my teachers would think if they touched my students' hands. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. I don't think about how many people my students, but they can kick, you know. What Mm -hmm. I think about is what my teachers would think about them and if whether or not I'm doing it as I was taught. I know that I am now. That's not a problem. If you take somebody that's been learning online compared to somebody that's been learning from a teacher, say, they both practice for six months, Mm -hmm. that person that's been learning online is going to be crushed, just absolutely devastated. Mm Mm-hmm. And the same thing can be said for somebody that's not learning it uh, properly, Wing Chun. Mm-hmm. There's a mm-hmm. lot of that going on too. And yeah, you can't you can't tell people they're they're doing something wrong anymore, especially online, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the wild west out there online. I I saw a guy, and I'm not going to mention his name, but everybody knows who this guy is. And uh-huh. when I first, after I first opened my school, he was online and he was, I saw him online ranting and raving uh, before Facebook and all that stuff. He was ranting and raving and how much Wing Chun was a bunch of BS, a bunch of baloney and it was all fakey and all that. Two years later, he was promoting himself as a master of Wing Chun. Oh, really? <laughs> I yeah. don't know who this is. Yes. Uh, but, uh... Looking at him and looking at his what he has behind him in his background, he comes from money, okay? So he had the ability mm-hmm. to do that. But for him to actually run into, uh, you know, and he wouldn't probably want to run into somebody with real talent because he wouldn't want to look bad, <laughs> okay? Sure. He looks really good online. You know, he shows uh, other people are saying, oh, wow, look at that, you know? I think... Um, one of the biggest things that people are ma- mistakes that people are making with their Wing Chun right now is um, they're not practicing the ground connection. They want to get right into the boxing part, and they won't. They don't want to learn the stance. There's a lot of people I see online that are doing this dance incorrectly. Yeah, I don't that's want to go important. into what, what a people different lineages are doing, but there is definitely a difference. Uh-huh. Go ahead. I think you're absolutely right with uh, with the stance because. I don't know, maybe it's the way that, that I was taught where the power is coming from. It's not, especially with something like Wing Chun that, as you said, the gentleman's art, it's like a, like a technical scientific boxing. You're learning all these little details so that you can maximize your power, which comes from the stance. Yeah. The biggest thing is, though, if you are able to relax into your structure, into your feet, and your whole structure is relaxed, then you can take an immense amount of power softly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it, if you understand how to make it that energy go to the ground, and then if you're overwhelmed with that energy, you understand how to spin away from it, and yet still be on that energy. That's another thing that people don't realize about the practice of Wing Chun. I see the hands is, and I try to tell my students this: if they get in their heads, what happens if you punch a Say if you punch a ball that's on the water, what happens? Uh, it goes in the water it and it springs right at you. It'll come right back, yeah. It comes right back at you, right around your fist. Uh-huh. If you get enough energy, you might punch it a, a half an inch away from your fist or an inch or two inches or two feet into the water. But mm-hmm. most generally, it's going to come right straight back at you. Right. And this is how I like to tell my students how Wing Chun should be Mm. it's the idea that um if you're absorbing energy you're also giving it at the same time it goes a little bit beyond that because the ball is hit first and then returns Mm -hmm. but in wing chun you're practicing hitting at the same time that you're being hit right that's the goal exactly yeah um this isn't always a possibility Because a lot of times when you're facing off with somebody, and this is something that I teach in my classes, what happens when you're already hit? You're standing there talking to somebody, and they just Mm -hmm. did a right cross on you, and the fist has already hit you. A lot of people 
don't teach that aspect of it. They teach what you do, you know, before that hit. Mm -hmm. But generally, when you're in a situation, you've already been hit because a lot of times you get surprised. People will sucker punch. They like to sucker punch. Yeah. You will get to the point in sensitivity where they can't touch you if you're aware of them. If you're not aware of them, then obviously they're going to get at least one in. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you need to stretch your awareness out so that it's you, 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 you know when it's coming. Well, what happens when you practice anything for a long enough time, your body responds all by itself mm -hmm. without Absolutely. thought. Yeah. You look at videos and you see uh, some guy walking along and he shoves an old man and the old man does a one, two, cause he trained in boxing and he knocks the guy out. Yeah. Right through, yeah. right after he, you know, in the middle process of being shoved because he yeah. trained it, that his body uh, responds a specific way. A lot of what I, what I teach also is in the moment, as you're, you're being hit in the moment, what do you do? And I, the reason why is because this comes from my own experience. What, what happens? Well, if you're going to go to point A to point B, you're either going to close the gap because you got to stop something from happening. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or somebody took a swing at you and you block it successfully and you're closing the gap in order to uh, finish them off or mm -hmm. subdue them or tell them to stop, whatever. I've had situations in my life when I've turned bad things into something good. Started out swinging and we ended up becoming friends. <laughs> yeah, that happens sometimes, right? <laughs> oh, the guy, I could have easily crushed him and, and turned the whole situation into something different and we could have been enemies for life. Uh huh. It's another story. <laughs> um, okay. But the point is, the main things that people, to me, in order for their Wing Chun to be good, they need to really focus on the root, you know, of the stance, the purpose of the root. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people that there's a saying in Wing Chun, uh, always return to the beginning. Have you heard that? In other words, so you've completed the system. Okay, uh -huh. you go back and you start all over again on your own, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, you're you're returning to the you're, you're retaining that um, that learning mind that that student's mind after learning it. You got to go back and and practice it on your own to to build that foundation further. That's how your own personal skill can come out even greater. Right. Um, there was a I just read recently where someone was uh, talking about a book that. Uh, Tushong Ten wrote about uh, Nimlik, the meaning of Nimlik, the energy mm -hmm. that you're producing when you're doing the first form, uh -huh. and uh, or the mind intention really um, is Nimlik, right? But he termed it as um, one of the words as meaning um, epiphany. Mm -hmm. One way of looking at it, it means a little idea or small idea, but another way of looking at it, it means epiphany. It comes mm -hmm. to you. Wow. You learned the five finger master Shifu? No, I figured it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, it was in there, right? You know, say you learned the first form. Every technique in the first form can be applied a myriad of different ways. And the same thing can be said with all the forms. Just like the, the katas and karate. Your teacher, your sensei will take you up to a certain level, say you're a black belt, such and such. Just because you completed his specific format and you have built your core up so that you're able to get yourself to that level, you've built your hand skills up to where you're able to get to that level. But if you're able to uh, throw your ego away and go back to the beginning and just absorb every single inch, Mm -hmm. There's a lot of discoveries to be made personally for each person. Yeah. You know, every teacher can see something and, and pass it on to his students um, because he thinks it's uh, very important in the system, right? Oh, check this technique out. <laughs> a lot of people, they want more and more and more, and they don't want to take the time to uh, go back to the beginning, so to speak. In other yeah, words, look at it deeper mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and when you look at it more deeply, the things that you already know, it's it's a profound experience because you're learning something, like you might become aware of something new about something that you already know. That's that's what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. A number of ways to look at, at each technique um, and produce power. Now, one of the things that um, people want out of a uh, self-defense system or out of um, the health benefits that comes from practicing Wing Chun, for instance, mm-hmm. depending on their, your teacher, there is quite a, a lot to Wing Chun. Um, I was lucky with my f- first teacher that I learned uh, the bone setting aspect of it. Really, mm-hmm. anyone that learns um, the structure and they're serious about the structure and realizing how the structure is of every single bone in the body, they can probably eventually, you know, figure out how to set a bone, right? Mm-hmm. The other aspect of it is um, paying attention to minute details. And again, getting back to the, to Yi Ji Kim Young Ma, a lot of people don't realize that there's a reason why the toes are pointing in, pointed inwards, okay? Uh-huh. Um, and everything goes towards the middle. Because when you're doing the stance, it, what you're doing is that front stance, all your energy is focused on going forward and mm-hmm. down, downwards, downwards and forwards. Um, just by the way that you are, you are absorbing into this, the way your body is going into the stance, the way your elbows are moving towards the center line in the middle, the pyramid, right? Uh-huh. But a lot of people are, practicing i see people are they like they show all these abilities but you look at their stance and their toes are going outwards you know mm-hmm. i can break their knee so easy with a kick it, it's just pathetic <laughs> so many <laughs> different things that are important in the structure of wing chun and when um i first started going online with this stuff and i you know saw people were commenting on this and commenting on that i started getting real passionate in the beginning about telling me, hey, you're not doing this right. Hey, you, you should be doing that. And I realized, well, you know what? Their system works just fine for them. Okay. It might bother me because to me, they could be doing it better, but it's never going to bother them <laughs> unless yeah. they get it. I don't know. That's that's one part of it. Well, that's the foundation, as is said, of Wing Chun. Yeah. Yeah, the foundation, of the most basic things like coming back to the stance. This comes, it comes um, back to the stats. If people want to find you, uh, you're in Broad Albin, New York, and you said that's uh, about an hour away from uh, from Albany? Roughly that, yeah. Not, and, not um, quite that. I'd say more like 30 minutes, 30, 30 40, 40 more minutes, five minutes, depending okay, on Okay, so, drive, so outside, of, yeah. outside, of, outside of Albany. And, uh, and people can find you at your Facebook page, London's Wing Chun. Uh, it's a Facebook group there. Yes. Well, that's Wing Chun. Um, they can contact me through that page. Great. And uh, all right, so we have Larry London. Thank you so much for for coming in and speaking with us. It's been really great. Real pleasure talking to you guys. I always enjoy talking about uh, you know anything related to <laughs> to the Wing Chun, to the martial arts. I know it's a. Uh, we have that passion. We can just talk about it. You know, it's, it's just like, uh, it's like breathing. That's right. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Wing Chun Discussion Podcast. Log on to wingchundiscussion.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. More episodes are available on iTunes, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.